but there's going to be a small percentage. I'll say probably at least one or two of you all that are going to take this to heart and this is going to turn up your business to the next level. What's up? It's your favorite country cousin, JT. I'm here with my notebook again because you guys know I'm naturally a talker. If I don't have just some quick notes, we'll be here way too long. What I'm going to talk to you guys about in today's video is how to become financially free as an independent courier. The mistake that a lot of independent couriers make is that they create a job for themselves when it was always intended for it to be a business. So the 3PL is treating you like you're your own business. The IRS is gonna treat you like you're your own business. Everybody is gonna treat you like it's your own business, except you, you gonna treat it like you created your own job. So complacency is the thief of completion. So a lot of people get into this business as one man, one woman operations. They say, well, I'm making just as much money as I would've been making on my job. And then they get complacent and they don't complete the play. The play is it doesn't make sense for you to start a business just to be limited in your mind to only make the same amount of money that you make working a nine to five job. If you're gonna take on all that additional risk, at least take advantage of all that additional upside that it's gonna provide for you as well, right? So uh, first tip I have for you, create systems in your business. Create systems in your business. I'm big on business systems. Hence the name changed from JT Hustles to JT Automations. A lot of people was getting it twisted. They were just jumping into hustles, getting burnt out, and then falling by the wayside. And I don't want to build a community of people that don't have longevity, don't have sustainability. So we got into it, right? We got straight into the automated side of it. And you need to systematize your business. Now, I recommend that you don't romanticize your business. What I mean by that is that you don't feel like nobody can do the business as good as I'm gonna do the business, guess what? They don't need to do the business as good as you gonna do the business. They need to do the business per the system that you create around it. And I think lots of times what I've seen is that it's not so much that you don't trust other people as much as you don't trust yourself to be able to create a system and create a management structure around that system to ensure that that business runs without you, right? Also bigger than that, a lot of people, they deal with this complex of because it's their business, they got to be hands on. They got to feel needed. They kind of feel less than if they're not the ones that's, you know, turning the bolts, driving the wheel, doing all of this stuff in their business. And I don't want you to feel that way. True business, especially the upside financially. Hold on, wait. I know you're enjoying this video that you're watching. We're going to get you right back to the action in just a second. Have you ever heard that the rich keep getting richer while the poor get poorer? Out of all of the metrics that they analyze to make those decisions, the number one thing that they find is real estate ownership is why that gap continues to spread. Most people think that investing in real estate takes a lot of money, perfect credit, or both. Do you know that you can buy real estate for $1,000 or less without using debt and without wholesaling or get paid just for trying? I'll outline how to do that in my book and it's through tax sale investing. Now there are a few nuances that you need to know to make sure that you bid on the right properties that are gonna give you the best ROI, whether that's you getting the property or getting paid just for trying. And I outline all of that and more in my book. I'll make sure it's linked underneath this video. But now, back to the video comes from systematizing your business, hiring people, and then scaling it up that way. If you are just dead set on, you don't wanna create systems and hire people and scale up your business that way, what you should do is still scale up your business to the greatest of your ability and start first investing in your financial literacy, seeing what can you deploy your money, what can you deploy your money at, and then once you identify what you can deploy your money at as a long-term investment, start peeling off money and investing it in that investment vehicle, all right? Being an independent courier, just like every other business, is, is, there is no 401k plan, there is no company retirement, so you do need to be thinking ahead. I wish each and every one of you all longevity and abundance. However, that means one day you're gonna get old one day, and when you get old, I want you to be more than prepared to take on all the challenges and all the joys that come with you being an older person later on in life, all right? Next up on my list, I have pay yourself first. Now, once I give this breakdown, most independent couriers either completely disagree with me, shut down their mind and not open to get into the next level. But there's going to be a small percentage. I'll say probably at least one or two of you all that are going to take this to heart. And this is going to turn up your business to the next level. Pay yourself first 50% of your income. Then you need to pay your bills with no more than 25% of your income. 
and you need to invest the remaining 25% of your income. So that first 50%, you put it to the side, you live as if you don't have that money. That money is designated to take on big opportunities if and when they come. If you don't have a zero, that helps you establish your first zero, right? Now, most people say they can't do that because if they take 50% of their income and live like they don't have it and just slide it over here to a bank account that they don't have access to or they're disciplined enough to not bother, then the other 50% of their income isn't enough. That is why I know that a lot of people, if they have that mindset at least, are already thinking about business the wrong way. Actually, they're not even thinking about business like business because they're limiting themselves. There's nothing to say that you can't make more money in business. It's not a job where you're limited by this commission rate, this many hours a day and you get paid by the hour, this salary, and you're pretty much locked in by that salary, right? There's unlimited upside. You can create more value in your business. There's a whole multitude of videos here on this channel that actually break down how you can do that if that interests you. So again, pay yourself first 50% of your income, pay your bills with the other 25%, invest that last 25%. Invest that last 25% in short-term high interest rate debt first, financial literacy second, and then whatever you learned via investing in your financial literacy third. Now, if you say your recurring bills are higher than your 25% uh, allocation for that, then that means that you either need to make more money or downgrade your lifestyle or do both. Same thing with if any of these percentages don't make sense right now. Like I said, vast majority of people are gonna say, JT, that's impossible, write me off, stop watching the video. But the one or two people that actually say, how can I realistically hit that goal, you're gonna go to the next level. That's what I did, that's what everybody else I know has done and continues to do to this day, right? As a seven-figure entrepreneur, million dollar award here, 100K in a day award there, proclamation from a city there, more awards behind the camera, more awards at my other properties, right? These are just some hard truths that we adhere to as people that wanna be high level entrepreneurs. And that is my sincere goal for you and all of your loved ones to have an abundance of good health and great wealth. All right, moving on with the list for the sake of time. Snowball debt, least the greatest. That's what I touched on with the allocations of that last 25%. High interest, short-term debt first. After you knock that out, that could be credit card bills, that could be a car payment, whatever. That long-term debt, like your 30-year mortgage, is not what I'm referring to here. Um, and not even re referring to that long-term student loan debt either. But that short-term, high-interest rate debt, knock that out. And then uh, you start deploying it into your financial literacy because you never invest in anything you don't understand. And then you end it by investing in whatever you learn through that investment fi uh, in financial literacy that you did prior to it. Um, last... Last, last. When I say last, this is after you've made at least, and this is going to be a low number compared to the people that do this on a way bigger level than me. Until you make at least half a million dollars a year consistently each and every year, you should not diversify your income. If you're doing something and it's not enough money, either get better at it, A, or if it's not possible to make more money if you got better at it, then you should completely switch industries, B. All right. Uh, the, the issue that most people have is they diversify too soon. So you're putting a little bit of water in 10 cups. Imagine if you just filled up one cup till it overflowed and then use that overflow to fill up additional cups. All right. That's how people that are really wealthy and really know how to play the financial game at the highest level. That's the only way they play it. So if you're interested in doing things the right way, that's the right answer. At the end of the day, it's completely up to you. I'm not here to argue with you, right? Um, moving on here. Last thing that I have on the list. Well, matter of fact, that was the last thing that I had on the list. So um, in the next video, for those of you that are interested, we're going to talk about how I went from homeless to becoming a millionaire in two short years. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, have post notifications turned on if that sounds interesting to you, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.